Aaron Boster here with the Ohio Health MS Center. This is my third installment of direct questions I'm answering uh, with regards to um, a really interesting blog post by Dr. Gavin Giovannoni. Dr. Giovannoni, uh, a couple days ago, uh, wrote in Bart's blog a series of real-world questions that he wanted uh, answers to. Uh, I'm taking a few minutes and I'm responding to his questions with my own personal opinions. Uh, this information is not based on science, on clinical trials, it's based on um, my experience having infused a bunch of people with alemtuzumab. Um, and so this is my third installment. Uh, I've done this twice earlier. You can look back through the feeds and find the responses. And uh, this series of questions has a lot to do with uh, cell counts and we're starting to get into the weeds a little bit, looking at some really deep things. So the first question I'll entertain is, what do you do if someone has a relapse several months before the next dose of alemtuzumab is due? Um, can you give it early? So we remember that we dose five days in a row, and then we go a full 12 months before we give another three days. And he's asking during that time frame, what do you do if someone has disease activity, a new clinical attack? Well, my response is you fill in the gaps with steroids. And so if you're having a clinical attack, we treat a clinical attack. We want to hasten your recovery. We want to shut down inflammation. We don't want it to get worse. On the contrary, we want it to get better faster. And that doesn't impact my assessment on whether the therapy's worked or not. Um, I remember that it takes eight doses to get this thing set up properly. That we give five doses, and then a year later we give three more. So if we're in the middle, we're in the middle. And I recommend that we fill in the gaps with steroids. I do not think that it's probably the best scenario to give the drug early. The second part of the question was, do you give uh, the second dose sooner? Now in the United States, uh, we can't get a hold of the drug sooner. So for example, if we ask for it on 363 days after the first dose, the manufacturer won't release it. And so we actually logistically can't give it earlier. But even if we were able to, it's not my recommendation. Um, I would want to space those out by a year. The next question is, um, can you give the next course of alemtuzumab to someone who has persistent lymphopenia post-alemtuzumab? Now, in simple language, after you give someone Lemtrada alemtuzumab, it drops their lymphocyte counts. There's all these different white blood cells, and the ones of interest are the lymphocytes. And if you give someone alemtuzumab, the lymphocytes go really low. Now, over the course of the subsequent year, they may start to slowly, slowly come back up. And he's asking, well, what if they don't come up enough? Can you still dose? And my answer is um, yes. I would not hold the second uh, course of alemtuzumab just because of lymphopenia in isolation. Uh, the lymphopenia is part of the mechanism, uh, and we remember that we're going to select CD52 positive cells. Those are going to be adult lymphocytes, and then we're going to knock them out of the park. We're going to kill them. And then there's going to be a slow return, uh, and the, uh, this mechanism doesn't have to completely uh, occur in one year. It may go on for a while. Now, when I would become concerned is not in the setting of lymphopenia. It's if other cell lines were still low. Rarely we find that neutrophils drop more than 20%. If neutrophils dropped lower and stayed low, and in fact, if I was looking at a patient who was neutropenic in preparation for their next round, in that situation, I would take great pause. Uh, and I don't think that I would go in guns blazing with the second, with the second course. The next question Dr. Giovannoni asks is, apart from autoimmune thyroid, autoimmune kidney, and autoimmune uh, uh, ITP, immune thrombocytopenia, what other autoimmune conditions do we need to be vigilant about? Now, I can share from our observation that some of the patients in whom we've given alemtuzumab, we previously treated with other uh, cytotoxic agents, for example, cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide is a pan-immunosuppressant. It knocks down B cells and T cell lines. And there are patients in whom uh, we had given multiple rounds of cytoxin in the past, and now we're giving them alemtuzumab. Why? Well, because they had really bad disease earlier, and they have a really bad disease now. And in both situations, we're trying to suppress the immune response in different ways. In patients previously treated with cytoxin, we find that their cell lines uh, low, go low. And in fact, um, they're more likely to have not just lymphopenia, but also neutropenia and to have pancytopenia. And we've seen that transiently in one or two cases. And so we do take pause having given a cytoxin in the past. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something that we need to be very, very sensitive to as we, as we go forward. Um, other things as far as monitoring is concerned, uh, our program has evolved. Uh, we are now checking uh, TSH for thyroid with every single blood draw monthly as opposed to every three months. 
Logistically, when we checked every three months, if there was a missed blood draw, sometimes it didn't get redrawn in time. And so the better part of valor, we believe, is to draw the CVC with differential um, at the same time that you're drawing the creatinine and checking the urine, we also check a TSH, and that helps us. Now, the last question that I'll entertain uh, on this clip uh, has to do with um, a secondary autoimmunity. So we know that when we give alemtuzumab and you look out six years, there's about a 40% chance that we'll cause a thyroid autoimmunity. And the question is, is there any way to predict who is at more uh, high risk? Well, there's one piece of evidence that I think we have to stress. If you take alemtuzumab and you smoke cigarettes, it increases the risk of thyroid autoimmunity quite substantially. So we ask our MS patients not to smoke. It's bad for you, it's bad for your heart and lungs, it's bad for cancer risk. It also speeds up MS. But if you're a, a person with MS who's received alemtuzumab, there's yet another reason not to smoke, and it's because of the risk of secondary thyroid autoimmunity. This is Aaron Boster. Thank you for tuning in. I'm with the Ohio Health MS Center, answering some uh, provocative questions asked by Dr. Giovannoni at uh, Bart's MS. I'll do, there'll be one more installment, uh, and then we should wrap up these questions. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.